Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you some problem solving strategies to approach a race scenario. So Kelly and Amanda run a 100 meter race and Amanda wins by eight meters. That means that they started at the same point when Amanda crossed the finish line. Kelly was still eight meters back, so there was a difference of eight meters. So Kelly was at 92 meters when Amanda crossed the 100 meters. Okay, so with this, I would most likely approach this with an analytical approach where we look at the fact that we're going to look at, assuming both runners run the second race at the same pace as the first, so we're gonna use the same rate as the first one, we're gonna look at using the information that we know of distance equals rate times time, okay? Um, so for this one, we know a distance. We don't know the exact time, but we could pick a time that works easily in the problem and one that might be probable for the actual time to run the 100 meter dash for Amanda to cross. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this for rate and do my distance divided by time, okay? So let's establish a rate for the two runners to start with. So the first one is we know Amanda was the winner. So Amanda ran the full 100 meters. Let's say that it took 20 seconds for her to cross the finish line. So then what I would do is just do 100 divided by 20, which tells me that she's running at a rate at five meters per second. So then if we use this as her constant rate for the second race, we can see if we still use the distance equals rate times time, whether she will cross the finish line first or whether Kelly will. So Kelly was at 92 meters because she was eight meters behind Amanda when Amanda crossed the finish line. So she went 92 meters in 20 seconds. So if we do that division, 92 divided by 20 gives me 4.6. So she ran at a rate of 4.6 meters per second. So now we can use this information for the second one to see that we're going to see how long it would take. We would, in, in this case, we're actually going to look for the time it would take given the distance that they're going to run and the rate that they are traveling at. So this time we're gonna use the time is distance divided by rate. Okay, so for this one, our time for Amanda, so let's talk about Amanda first. We know that she's going to be running 100, plus she started eight back behind, so she's going to run a total of 108 meters at a rate of five meters per second. Okay, and we're gonna end up with seconds because of the fact that this is really 108 meters. When you're dividing by a fraction, remember we multiply by the reciprocal, so technically the five stays on the bottom, but the one second goes on the top, so our units do end up in seconds. So if we simplify this and we do 108 divided by five, we get a total of 21.6 seconds. So it would take her 21.6 seconds to run 108 meters. So we wanna do the same thing for Kelly. Kelly is starting at the, the starting line, and so she has a total of 100 meters. So we're going to see at 100 meters divided by 4.6 if she runs it faster or not. So if you plug this into your calculator, you do end up with 21.74 seconds. So it's going to take her slightly longer. So since this one is faster, we can say that Amanda will run the race. Okay, we could also think about it just using common sense and the fact that if we have a starting point, so this is the starting line, okay, and we know that Kelly is going to run the 100 meters. Okay, um, from the first problem, we know that Kelly, 
or that Amanda ran 100 meters in the same time that Kelly ran 92 meters. So if, let me grab a different color. So if Amanda is starting back eight meters, okay, for her to run the 100 meters, it's going to become equal at 92 meters because Amanda can run 100 meters in the same time that Kelly runs the 92 meters. So in that last little bit is where Amanda is going to pull ahead, okay? Mathematically, it makes more sense to use numbers that make sense for the situation. I just picked an arbitrary 20 seconds. She could have run it faster, slower. It really doesn't matter because you could pick any time. 20 is just easy to divide by. Um, so that's why I went with that value. Okay, so now let's look at a second scenario that this time Amanda starts 12 meters behind the starting line. So instead of starting, so here's our starting line, she's going to come back 12 meters. So she's going to run a total of 112 meters. So since we're going to be using the same pace as the last one, we already know that Amanda runs at a rate of five meters per second. And we know that Kelly runs at 4.6 meters per second. So we could use this information to see what our time would be. Technically on this one, our time, because it's div distance divided by rate again, um, we're going to say that Amanda's is going to be 112 divided by five, and we're going to end up in seconds again because the meters cancel out. So if I divide this out, 112 divided by five ends up giving me 22.4 seconds. Okay, we could find Kelly's again, um, but we already know that Kelly's running 100 meters and we already did the 100 divided by 4.6, and saw that it was 21.74 seconds for her to finish the 100 meter dash. Um, so in this case, even though Amanda is faster, it isn't quite enough to catch Kelly. She's starting back too far to be able to catch up with her, okay? So if she starts back too far, then it will give Kelly the chance to win at this rate. Okay, the last situation that I wanna talk about with you is what happens if we're trying to figure out how far behind the starting line must Amanda start to end the race in a tie, assuming they run at the same pace as the first. For this one, it might be helpful to set up a chart where we have Kelly and we have Amanda and we have the information that we know. The distance, we know that Kelly is going to run 100 meters. Amanda is going to run 100 meters plus some unknown meters because we're trying to figure out how much further she needs to get back in order for them to be the same, okay? The rate is going to be the same. We already talked about the fact that Kelly was running at 4.6 meters per second, and Amanda runs at five meters per second. So we could set this up as a, um, as a proportion where we're looking at our two times. So we're trying to figure out where time one equals time two. And remember that time is just the distance divided by the rate. So if I take Kelly's distance, and I'm gonna put the X on this side, so I'm gonna put Amanda first. So if I do 100 plus X divided by five, when does that equal 100 divided by 4.6? Now you have a couple different options with solving this. I could cross multiply and end up distributing in the 4.6, but to me, it's easier because my X is on the side and it's in the numerator, the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So personally, I would just take this amount over here and I would multiply it by five. So I'm just gonna multiply both sides by five. That way I'm just left with 100 plus X. 
And then I would take and plug into my calculator. I can either do 100 times 5, which is 500, and divide it by 4.6, or I could type it in as 100 divided by 4.6, or we could use the fact that coming back up here that it took 21.6, and I could just do the 21.6 times 5. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You end up with 108.7 as our um, total amount when we multiply that out. So now, if we're trying to figure out our distance, we would subtract 100 from both sides, and we can see that x ends up being 8.7 meters. So we're looking at the distance behind. So if Amanda starts 8.7 meters behind, the starting line, they will cross the finish line at the same time. Sorry, my handwriting got a little bit messy there at the end um, when I'm trying to write on this board and I haven't practiced in a while it does get a little bit sloppy at times. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.